When people say self-driving car or autonomous vehicle, they might be talking about completely different things to one another. And if you have a car right now, I can guarantee that it has a level of autonomy that you probably didn't know about. What? How is that possible? How does he know this about my car? Well, stick around and you'll find out. Oh God, it's clickbait, I hate it. Hi, my name's Mahmood. I'm a self-driving car engineer and I'm really concerned about the growing gap between technical and non-technical people. I think there's a lot of misinformation around and that causes people to one, either be really afraid of technology because they don't understand it, or two, become disillusioned with new developments or distrust new technology because it's always underperforming what is getting promised out there. And as the world gets more and more technically driven, I think that regular people, the ones who haven't spent uh, years of their life getting technical degrees and are knee deep in the actual work that's happening, um, they're affected a lot by the technology that gets developed. Self-driving cars, uh, machine learning that determines whether or not you have a bank loan, that sort of stuff affects your life. Now, I think that technical people are not the only ones who should be making these decisions. Regular people who haven't spent years of their life in technical institutions or in tech fields should be part of the conversations that are happening here. But a lot of the language that technical people use and the complicated nature of the systems make it really, really hard for someone who's outside the domain to come into it. So. I don't think that that should happen and I don't think that's how the world needs to be. So if you're interested in learning more about autonomous vehicles or demystifying other types of technology, hit that subscribe button and uh, keep watching. All right, here we go. Now in the technical world, there are these things called standards and what standards do is they allow multiple different countries, organizations, uh, institutions to all agree on how things will work on a technical level together. There is probably a standard for every single thing that exists in your room. Something along that supply chain would have had to conform to some sort of standard in order for it to get done. And as luck would have it, there is actually a standard that talks about the levels of autonomy of driverless vehicles. And this is called SAE J3016. Because that's easy for people to remember. <laughs> SAE stands for the Society of Automotive Engineers. This is the standardization body that created this standard. And J3016 is just the name of this standard. Now in the standard, there are six different levels. How do you do six? Um, <laughs> six, there are six different levels of <laughs> driving autonomy. Let's go through them. Level zero is not autonomous at all. Level zero has always been a little strange to me because you can point to a car and you can say, this vehicle has level zero driving automation. You can fit so much autonomous driving in it. All vehicles are at least a level zero. So if there's no autonomous function at all, you're level zero. Level one is when your vehicle has some sort of feature that allows you to either take your hands off the wheels or your feet off the pedals, but not both at the same time. Cruise control or lane keep assist those would all be level one uh, autonomous driving functionality. Level two is when you can take your hands off the wheels or your feet off the pedals at the same time. We're talking about adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist. This is where Tesla, comma AI, and any sort of vehicle that you see driving on highways, it's likely a level two vehicle. The vehicle manufacturer will say, you can drive this vehicle, it'll drive by itself, it's relatively good at doing that, but you need to be watching everything that it's currently doing because it might end up in a situation that is very unsafe and it's your responsibility as the driver to ensure that doesn't happen. I haven't seen any vehicles that are commercially available be above level two yet. So this is currently the highest level that you can buy. Now level three is similar to level two, but you can take your eyes off the road and the vehicle will be good for the majority of the journey. However, if the vehicle gets itself into a situation that is dangerous, then it throws control back over to the driver and the driver is expected to take over. It's sort of like, Jesus take the wheel, but you're Jesus and you don't have a lot of time to react. There is a lot of controversy around level three. 
There's a lot of research out there about the slower reaction times when you're involved in supervisory driving as opposed to active driving. That means that if you're just watching a car drive for you, you're going to be much slower to react than if you were actively driving the vehicle yourself. Which makes sense. That's a totally logical outcome from there. But the picture I have of autonomous vehicles, when someone tells me this is an autonomous car, I'm thinking I can sit back, the car can drive for me, and I could be reading a newspaper or playing on my phone or going to sleep or just not paying attention at all. And level three allows me to do that, but expects me to snap out of that. And that's just gonna be really difficult to me at least. But the bad situations that people can get into with self-driving cars, things like the Uber crash, which I'll have a video about soon, where someone treated a level two vehicle at the time as a level four vehicle. So the mismatch between what the driver thought that the vehicle is capable of versus what it was actually capable of was mismatched. And I think that in level three, that difference is extremely large. So it scares me and I don't think level three should happen personally. Now level four is a little bit close to my heart because that's the space that I work in. Vehicles with level four autonomy are able to drive completely autonomously in manufacturer specified situations or locations. For example, a level four vehicle might be only able to drive in places that have been HD mapped or the vehicle might only follow a certain path that's plotted out in GPS coordinates, or it might only work on highways, or it might only work in a specific car park. So you can think of it as uh, doing one thing extremely well without the need for any human intervention. If the vehicle is about to get into an unsafe or an uncertain situation, the vehicle knows how to stop and wait safely until there's human intervention or that threat has gone away. This is the first level of autonomous vehicles that don't necessarily need a steering wheel or pedals. You can drive these with joysticks, you can teleoperate these. This level is really exciting because a vehicle no longer needs to look like a car anymore. You can get a lot more creative and believe me, there are some really weird ones out there. But I see level four as being an opportunity for us to redefine what a vehicle is when you don't need to account for a driver at all times. I think that's pretty exciting. That's awesome to me. This is where all the most advanced self-driving cars are at the moment. So uh, Google's Waymo project, because it only works in areas that have LiDAR maps created for them. Level five is like the holy grail of autonomous driving. Basically, you get into a car, you tell it where you want to go, and it takes you there without you needing to interfere with it at all. It knows how to recover from weird situations. It knows how to navigate and plot alternate routes. It takes you exactly where you want to go, regardless of the conditions along the way. There are ways to effectively get level five through only level four functionality. For example, Google can decide to just pre-map everything, which is a huge task. But if they pre-map the world, uh, which they are very well on their way to doing, that allows them to use level four technology everywhere, which effectively gives you a level five vehicle. And that's basically it. It's a pretty simple, straightforward concept, but it's hidden behind this SAE J3016. It's a really unfriendly way for normal people to understand or see that this is just a rating system for the different vehicles. What level of driving autonomy does your vehicle have? Let me know in the comments. If you've got any questions about self-driving cars that you'd like me to answer, I'd be happy to answer them. We also have a Discord uh, that you're welcome to join uh, where our community hangs out or um, come and watch me on Twitch. Currently, I've been really into hacking challenges. Uh, it's something that's completely outside my wheelhouse. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad at it, but I feel like I'm learning uh, something new, uh, which is something I always enjoy. Anyway, uh, take care, stay safe, uh, stay inside, wear a mask, um, and have a good day. Bye.